Hi there, my name is Angela, and I want to share my story with you. It's different from what you might usually hear about difficult mothers-in-law because mine actually brings hope. Despite not being fortunate enough to have a wonderful husband, I was blessed with an incredible mother-in-law. Let me take you back to five years ago when I married my colleague, Anthony. Anthony was known for his magnetic personality, which naturally attracted people, including me. At the time, I was quite naive and recovering from a recent breakup, so Anthony's attention and sweet words were comforting. He seemed like a genuinely great guy who was well-regarded at work. Despite his flirtatious nature, it didn't seem excessive and everyone around us saw him as a good person. Our first date was memorable. Anthony shared with me how much he valued family, mentioning his disabled mother who lived with him after his father had left due to her disability. Anthony took pride in being a devoted son, ensuring the best care for his mother despite the challenges and costs involved. His dedication and love for his mother touched me deeply, especially since I had been my own mother's caregiver before she passed away from cancer. Understanding the demands of caring for a loved one, I admired Anthony even more. However, I was unaware of his ulterior motives behind this care. As we continued to date for three years, I noticed that my income was higher than Anthony's, but it never seemed to bother him or affect his masculinity. This, along with his affection and our shared experiences, made me believe I had found the perfect partner. During our relationship, I had the opportunity to meet his parents. Anthony's mother, Laura, had become disabled after an accident, leading to his parents' divorce. Anthony's father, George, chose not to remain in a challenging situation. When it came to caring for someone with disabilities, Laura, Anthony's mother, faced significant challenges. She needed a wheelchair for mobility and, although she received some support from the government, it was hardly enough. Learning about Laura's situation and Anthony's father, George, who left because of the difficulties, made me empathize with Laura and foster a strong dislike for George. Yet, Anthony remained close to his father, which meant I had to make peace with his presence in our lives. Anthony's marriage proposal came not long after I met his family. I accepted without hesitation, fueled by love and the desire to start a family with him. But with the proposal came a candid conversation. Anthony opened up about the financial burdens of caring for his mother. His salary was mostly dedicated to her needs, leaving him with minimal savings. Marrying him meant accepting not only his financial situation, but also the responsibility of caring for Laura. I reassured Anthony, It's okay. I understand the weight of caring for someone. Laura is wonderful, and I've grown to love her. Living with her and supporting her feels right to me. She's like a mother to me. Anthony expressed concern about the financial implications, but I was more than willing to contribute. I don't need your money, Anthony. I want to help with your mom. It'll lighten your load, I told him, and he was grateful for the support. True to my word, I embraced the role of caring for Laura as if she were my own mother, looking forward to having a parental figure in my life again. Anthony was appreciative of my understanding and willingness to help. Our wedding was planned mostly by me, as Anthony was focused on a work promotion. I was happy to take the lead and even covered most of the expenses knowing his financial situation. After the wedding, Anthony proved to be a loving and attentive husband, genuinely caring for his mother. Laura, for her part, showed me immense affection. She was always excited to spend time with me, though I noticed she didn't share the same connection with Anthony. This struck me as odd, but I didn't dwell on it, happy to have found a family with Anthony and Laura. Five months into our marriage, Anthony approached me with a request that marked the beginning of a new chapter. He wanted to discuss his mother's health care and proposed consulting a renowned doctor in the city for better treatment options, albeit at a higher cost. Anthony suggested that I could assist financially, to which I readily agreed, proposing to handle the payments directly upon receiving the bills. Anthony, however, preferred a direct transfer to him, citing convenience and a tight financial situation due to caregiver expenses. Trusting him, I agreed to send the money, prioritizing Laura's health over any doubts. Anthony expressed his gratitude and assured me he'd repay me, though I insisted repayment was unnecessary. My main concern was Laura's well-being. George, Anthony's father, however, was critical of our spending on Laura, labeling it wasteful and questioning the value of investing in her health. Despite George's skepticism, Anthony defended our decision, emphasizing the potential benefits of the new treatment and the financial support I provided, 
which eased the monetary strain. However, George's disapproval and Anthony's insistence on direct money transfers raised some red flags for me. I trusted Anthony, but something felt off about bypassing the transparency of paying bills directly. As time went on and I began contributing to Laura's healthcare costs, noticeable changes occurred in Anthony's demeanor. He became increasingly insistent on financial help, frequently citing various reasons for needing more money. Gradually, he was requesting nearly a $3,000 from my salary each month, a significant sum attributed to the costly treatments. Despite these expenditures, there was no visible improvement in Laura's condition. Moreover, Anthony's attention towards me diminished. He often returned home late and immediately retired for the night, neglecting household responsibilities and our relationship. When confronted about his altered behavior and lack of engagement at home, Anthony justified it by claiming the pressures of work and his pursuit of a promotion, suggesting that household chores were my sole responsibility due to his absence. This shift in dynamics, compounded by financial demands and a lack of improvement in Laura's health, left me questioning the situation's transparency and Anthony's changing priorities. After Anthony's shift in behavior, our home dynamics took a turn for the worse. You get home before me, but now I'm the one caring for Laura in the evenings because you won't hire a nighttime caregiver. I'm overwhelmed with everything, Anthony. You need to contribute more. I confronted him one day, exhausted from juggling work and caregiving alone. Anthony's response was dismissive. You knew what this involved. You agreed to help with my mom, so I don't see why you're complaining now. I'm willing to help Anthony, but I can't do it all by myself. She's your mother too. You need to play a part in her care. I'm tired and need some support here, I argued, hoping for some understanding. Instead, Anthony retorted sharply, You've taken care of her this long. Since you're so fond of her, you can keep at it. I need my space. And with that, he left for his game room, leaving me stunned and alone with my thoughts. That night, I cried myself to sleep, feeling utterly alone and neglected. I attributed Anthony's coldness to his demanding job and a new project that seemed to consume all his time and energy. Part of this project involved working closely with Kathleen, a new colleague who quickly became as popular as Anthony. Their growing closeness worried me, yet I tried to trust Anthony, believing he wouldn't betray our marriage. However, my trust was shaken when Anthony announced he had planned a vacation, but not with me. I've put a lot of effort into planning this trip, Angela, but it's for me and my friends. You're not coming, he revealed, leaving me speechless and hurt. It had been three years since we had taken any trip together, and now he was choosing to go without me, using funds that were mysteriously available despite our tight finances. When I questioned where the money was coming from, Anthony dismissed my concerns, insisting it was none of my business. Even Laura, usually a voice of reason, couldn't sway him. She reminded him of how little we had ventured out since our honeymoon, and hinted at the financial contributions she had made from her disability benefits and inheritance, which Anthony had been managing. The revelation of Anthony's plans, his disregard for our relationship, and the financial discrepancies brought to light a painful truth about the distance growing between us, fueled by neglect, misused trust, and a vacation planned without me, highlighting the depth of our problems. Discovering Anthony's financial arrangements with Laura without my knowledge left me seething with anger. The situation escalated when he announced his plans for a vacation without me, only to later reveal he was using funds provided by Laura. My frustration reached a boiling point, but I was at a loss for words, particularly incensed by his disregard for me at home. Just before his departure, Anthony dropped another bombshell. He had dismissed Laura's caregiver due to high costs and declared that I would now assume full responsibility for her morning care. His unilateral decision, made without my input, was both shocking and unreasonable. Why do you assume I'll just comply with your demands? Laura needs professional care in the mornings, not just anyone, I protested, emphasizing my lack of qualifications for such a role. Anthony's response was dismissive and cold. I'm done with all this. You've said Laura's like your mother, so now she's your responsibility. I'm financially drained because of her, he retorted, disrespectfully dismissing his own mother's worth. I was appalled by his callousness. How can you speak about your mother like that? What's happened to you, Anthony? You've become a stranger to me, I lamented, hoping for some semblance of the man I married to reemerge. 
Anthony left without another word, returning late at night, avoiding any further discussion. Laura, having overheard our conversation, felt guilty and apologized for being a burden, which I immediately reassured her was not the case. In the days leading up to Anthony's trip, our household found a new rhythm with me working from home to care for Laura, despite the ongoing tension between Anthony and me. The situation took another sour turn when I encountered Kathleen at the office, her condescending remarks about my caregiving role and thinly veiled gloating about the upcoming trip with Anthony were both hurtful and alarming. Don't speak about Laura in such a disrespectful manner, I countered, but Kathleen's smug response only heightened my suspicions of an affair. Returning home, the thought of facing Anthony was unbearable. Kathleen's insinuations confirmed my worst fears about their relationship. Caught in a web of betrayal and burdened with newfound responsibilities, I struggled to reconcile the man Anthony had become with the husband I once loved. That night, Anthony's unusually high spirits over his upcoming vacation left a sour taste in my mouth, especially after Kathleen's insinuations. Driven by suspicion and confusion, I decided to delve a bit deeper and checked his phone. The discovery was heart-shattering. Anthony wasn't planning a trip with his friends. He was embarking on a seaside getaway with Kathleen, his mistress. The messages revealed an eight-month-long affair, during which he had squandered the money I provided on gifts and financial support for her. Feeling betrayed and overwhelmed, I quickly hid my findings to avoid alerting Anthony. The day after Anthony left for the vacation, I was engulfed in despair, mourning the life and love I thought we had. It struck me hard. I had married someone who had deceitfully presented himself, only to revert to selfishness and betrayal. Meanwhile, I was left to care for his mother, adding insult to injury. When Laura found me in tears, I couldn't hold back the truth any longer. I shared with her Anthony's infidelity and the vacation he planned with his mistress, expressing my utter disillusionment and refusal to face him again. Laura was appalled and saddened, lamenting that Anthony was mirroring the worst traits of his father and urging me to take action. The conversation took an even more shocking turn as Laura revealed that Anthony had neglected her medical needs, contradicting his claims of expensive treatments and doctor visits. Instead, he had been exploiting the situation for his personal gain, dining out with friends while leaving her in the car. Laura hadn't received any recent medical attention, much less the costly treatments Anthony had claimed. Feeling both humiliated and outraged, I shared with Laura my intentions to end my marriage with Anthony, refusing to be further exploited and disrespected. Laura, despite feeling like a burden, expressed her support and love, appreciating the care I had extended to her as if she were my own mother. With a newfound resolve, I assured her of my affection and commitment to her well-being, hinting at a plan to address Anthony's betrayal and ensure he faced the consequences of his actions. I reassured Laura of my well-being and determination not to be exploited by Anthony any longer. Moreover, I decided that Kathleen, who had intruded into my marriage, would not get away with her actions unscathed. Armed with screenshots from Anthony's phone as evidence of his infidelity, I set my plan into motion, determined that Anthony's recent escapade would be his last for a considerable period. The following day marked the beginning of my decisive actions. I sought out a reputable divorce attorney, presenting all the evidence of Anthony's cheating. I also intended to file a lawsuit against Kathleen for alienation of affection, bolstered by the solid proof I had gathered. My attorney, confident in the strength of my case, cautioned me against approaching human resources about the affair before finalizing the divorce, to avoid any potential alimony claims from Anthony if he were to lose his job due to the scandal. He promptly prepared the divorce documents, ensuring everything was in order before Anthony's return. Upon Anthony's return from his vacation, I confronted him with a calm yet firm resolve, with Laura by my side for moral support. Anthony's shock was evident, resembling a deer caught in the headlights. I laid everything out plainly. I was aware of his affair, had gathered incontrovertible evidence, and had already initiated divorce proceedings to simplify the separation process. Anthony's immediate denial and refusal to sign the divorce papers were met with my unwavering stance. I revealed the extent of my knowledge, including the financial transactions he made to Kathleen from our joint account. Anthony's pleas for reconsideration fell on deaf ears, especially when he attempted to manipulate the situation by invoking Laura's dependence on us. 
I countered his desperation with the truth about his misuse of both my finances and Laura's disability grant, emphasizing that Laura herself had endorsed my decision to divorce. My resolution was clear. I was severing ties not only because of his betrayal, but also due to his exploitation of our trust and resources. The path forward was set, marking the end of our marriage and the beginning of a new chapter for me, free from Anthony's deceit and manipulation. I firmly assured Laura that I would be taking over her care, emphasizing that Anthony was no longer our concern. Laura, showing her strength and disappointment in Anthony, declared she had no desire to remain married to someone who had proven to be even more deceitful than his father. She made it clear that our home was no longer open to Anthony, stating that I was welcome to stay, but he must leave. Anthony's protests, claiming entitlement to the house as a future inheritance, were swiftly countered by Laura. She vowed never to leave the house to him, accusing him of betrayal and theft not just against me, but against her as well. With resolve, she informed Anthony of his two-month eviction notice, effectively cutting him off from any financial support previously provided by us. As Anthony pleaded for forgiveness, realizing the gravity of his actions and the loss of financial security, his distress grew. Even when he received the divorce papers, his desperation was palpable, leading him to seek support from his father, who criticized me for my decision. Laura, undeterred, confronted him as well, ensuring Anthony understood the full extent of his actions. Following a month of tension, Anthony was left with no choice but to move in with his father, as his mistress grew frustrated with the sudden halt in his financial support towards her. Pushed by the threat of exposing the affair to his employer, Anthony reluctantly signed the divorce papers. Yet my pursuit of justice didn't end with the divorce. I proceeded to inform his boss about the affair, leading to job losses for both Anthony and Kathleen. During this tumultuous time, Laura and I found solace in a vacation. Missing the ensuing fallout, but content with the knowledge that Anthony and Kathleen faced consequences for their actions. I also moved forward with the lawsuit against Kathleen for alienation of affection, which she, now jobless alongside Anthony, pleaded for me to dismiss. I saw this as fitting retribution for her role in disrupting our marriage. Now, I continue to live with and care for Laura, who has become more family to me than Anthony ever was. She's even expressed intentions of leaving the house to me, a gesture of her deep gratitude and affection, though I've yet to accept. As I re-enter the dating world, hopeful and open to new possibilities, I reflect on the journey that has brought me here, looking forward to what the future holds, with Laura by my side as my unwavering support and family.